It is a privilege to be joined today on the summit by Paul Hanson, who is the head football coach for the Mid American Nazarene Pioneers. Coach, I am happy for you at this point of the season. Obviously, a record that's unblemished, and the uh, the the athletic department and the Twitter account threw out some really cool stats this past weekend, and I want to run those by you really quickly. Nine game winning streak right now. You're five and zero on the season. That's the best start, by the way, since 2010. Nine game winning streak. That's the second longest active streak in the NAIA right now. You have an offense that's putting up points at better than 54 points per game, second in the NAIA. A defense that's giving up only 8.8 points per game, fourth in the NAIA right there. Coach, it's been a great start, and at the midpoint in the season. Uh, talk about where you stand as a team and, and how cool it is to get to hear those numbers. Yeah. And, uh, th Joey, thanks for having me. It's really good to talk to you and, uh, as I'm glad you're doing well and, uh, we, we've been praying for you here in Olathe, but, uh, yeah, we're Thank really, you. uh, we're right now we're in a good spot, I would say. And, uh, I think all those, all those stats are really cool, but in the, the day, the most important thing is we've, uh, we've won all the games we're supposed to, and we're, we're in a good spot going into October in which, uh, you know, October, a lot of teams, that's a lot of times when the conferences start, and that's when you can win or lose your season a lot of times in October. So really excited where we're at. Um, yeah, dating back to last year, you know, winning nine straight games, that's a big deal for us. Um, and I, I feel like you know, last year we got hot at the right time, and we've just continued that through the spring, through the summer, and then uh, here into October again. So really uh, happy with our guys and, and really uh, where we're at right now. And um I know we're not we're not done, and we want to continue to keep this going. I know we've talked about Adrian Parsons a number of times before, and and coach friend of the channel. Which, by the way, I appreciate you coming on too. Thank you for the prayer as well. But I, I as long as we can talk about Adrian Parsons here, and if you, I'm sure you'd be happy if you had three or four more years of eligibility. But let's mention him right now: 277.2 passing yards per game. That's good enough for second in the in, or excuse me, ninth in the NAI. 61.2 passing completion 21 passing touchdowns tied for first in the nai and one of three players tied at that top spot he's the only one to have had 21 in five games as opposed to six parsons continues to lead the way for the pioneers yeah you know uh, i think we've spoke several times about him and, and uh, his ability and what he's done for our program and we're very thankful for that um you know earlier this fall he you know he broke the all-time leading passer a record. Um, he's he's actually coming up here on eight thousand yards passing his career here at Mid America, and uh, that's that's pretty cool to to kind of see how he's just grown in the position and continue to get better. But yeah, he's continued just where he left off uh, these last couple of years, and he's 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 playing really smart football. I think that's a big thing that um, you'll see with him. He's he has all these touchdowns, but he's also being smart with the football, not afraid to hand it when he needs to hand it. Um, you know, throw it when he needs to throw it, and. And, and really, he's actually, you know, he's, I think he has like three rushing touchdowns on a season two with almost 200 yards rushing. So he's added another dimension to his his game that's helping us uh, in our run game. Talk about that run game, too, because it's not been all an air attack. Even with the numbers that Parsons putting up, you all are sixth in the NAIA in rushing as a team. And it's interesting to think about that, too, because it's it's not just one player in particular. As a matter of fact, you have no one in the top 25 in rushing yards per game. You have to look down a couple more spots to find number 27, Cameron Finley. Had a big game a couple of weeks ago. Of course, the bye week in between there, but he had 193 rushing yards against William Woods. Five touchdowns as well for him. The senior from Sedalia, Missouri, Smith Cotton High School. I, I threw that one in there, by the way, for Mrs. Midwest Sportsnet as too. She'll she'll get the reference. But uh, a, a big season so far for him. But as a whole, the team is doing well and giving you that balanced attack. Yeah, I think uh, I think we we have a very like we said before the season, a very veteran group on offense. So we returned four starting offense alignment. So guys who've played a lot of football together. Coach Sample is an offensive line coach. He does a great job with those guys. And really, they've kind of led the way up front. And we know, like, we, we know at the end of this thing, like, we want to play football in November, late November. And we know we're going to have to run the ball. And so uh, we've always kind of, I guess, been known as a passing team, I guess you could say, which, I mean, uh, that's fine. But, uh, you know, we've, we've done a good job of uh, running the ball when we needed to this year. And, and really, 
yeah, we don't have a lot of guys in the top 10 in rushing, but it's kind of by a committee. You know, Cam Finley's had a great a great season so far with the rushing. You know, he's one of those COVID uh, seniors that came back for his COVID year uh, this year. And, he, and uh, man, he, he's having a great season. Sean Cherry is an, another guy I would say that's running really well right now. Two-time all-conference uh, uh, running back. So between those two guys kind of picking up the slack in the run game and then Adrian running a little bit, and uh, that's that's definitely been a good dimension that maybe we haven't done as much here. Um, but you know, we still, end of the day, we're just going to do what's working. We're just going to keep going with it. I mean, if it helps us win again, that's all that matters. We're speaking now with Paul Hanson here on Midwest sports net, as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond, I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. I really have absolutely no idea what it does algorithmically wise for the channel, but it does help and, uh, and join. We have memberships as well and, and help support us here as we, uh, we're talking with, with great coaches like coach Hanson. It's bye week in Olathe. Well, you just finished bye week. As a matter of fact, you're heading into the second part of the season, be playing more Hart South teams, including the the one on the schedule you have lined up. What what was bye week like in Olathe? Well, I uh, about about three weeks ago, our leaders came to me and uh, asked us to uh, to not stop what we're doing and just keep it a normal week. So we didn't change one thing, to be honest with you. We practiced, uh, we practiced normal. We practiced full pads. I mean, we, we got after it. Um, we went offense versus defense every day. I mean, we just kind of kept it as normal as possible and kind of, I'm kind of like a weird stat guy. So I went, I went back over the last eight years and over the last eight years here at mid America, we've been three and five, uh, coming off the bye week. So, our guys were, hey, we're going to do something different. And so we, we if you would have came to our practice last week, you would have not have known that it was a bye week. I mean, we, we, we kept it as normal as possible. And uh, I think our, our guys responded well. It's always cool, too, when your leaders are coming asking you to do uh, something different. And so uh, I think the best teams are player-led teams. So if that's what they want, that's what we're going to do. And so uh, we'll see if it worked. Um, but I, I think so far just the – attitude of our team and our leaders that's what they wanted and so we kept it normal so that's what we did i'm gonna i'm gonna use that stat coach as, as we preview in, in in a later video tomorrow evening so i'm gonna use that three and five see if you guys can turn the tide a little bit with a, a shift in by week we talk about the offense regularly and why not because the offense at, at uh, mid-american nazarene in the last few years as the the win total has grown the offense seems to be a big part of it. You all have been able to put points on the board, but defense-wise, I mean, 8.8 points a game, I think any time that you are giving up less than double digits, you know, you're giving up less than 10 points a game, you put yourself, uh, your offense, and, and your whole team in a better position to win. Tell us a little bit about the defensive effort. Yeah, I, this is something that I, I kind of went back to in our season preview and in the spring. I just I thought our defense was going to be really good. We're a very veteran group now on that side of the ball. And Coach Cordova, our defensive coordinator, does an unbelievable job uh, with the scheme. And really, we, we, we finally got the recruits and the players in the positions that we needed to to help us to be a dominant defense. And uh, man, uh, the, the guys is playing really well, really, really uh, fast defense. We're creating turnovers. Um, it's, it's pretty cool to see um, just how that side of the ball is uh, kind of transformed over the last couple of years because I haven't always been able to say that. And, uh, and, and, you know, when you're only giving up 8.8 points a game, I mean, that you're going to you have a chance to win every game, you know? Uh, and so between that and our offense kind of playing complementary with each other and our special teams is playing really well, uh, doing well too. So I think the last couple of weeks we've only had one kickoff return in a game. So it's like, you know, we're getting some guys rest in some other areas that normally wouldn't happen because our defense is playing so good. So uh, we got to keep that going here in the heart South. We, we got some really hard games coming up. Um, kind of yes. like I told our guys the other day that, you know, for, for the next four weeks, every time we play a team, they're going to have a winning record. And really, if you go back and look at some of the teams we played, they're, they're going to go on to have great seasons, you know, Graceland, Prue State. And so um, there, there's some opportunities there just in this deal back. Hey, those are some really good wins that we had. And, and uh, I think going on the road and, and winning like we have this year has been really, um, really cool to see, you know, outscoring our opponents 171 to 14 points, you know, and that's a big deal for our defense to be able to say, hey, we're, 
we're just we're just not happy with like a, with a big win. We want to shut people out, and so that's been pretty cool to see that attitude. And we're going to need that down the road for sure for us to have a shot at any of these games. Absolutely, and and coach, you know, you mentioned that even with the the running game too. And if if you're playing in November, you know, it's likely well at some point in time you're going to be on the road if you continue along. It's just uh, that's just kind of part of it. You hope it you could get everything at home, but very likely you'll be on the road and. Often when that happens, you're in a, in a cold weather situation. So it's nice for you, I'm sure, to be able to say, not only can we play on the road, we can score on the road, we can run the ball on the road, we can play defense on the road. So all of those things are there. Uh, Coach, tell me about this team just a little bit and what's a, what's a quality of, of the 2024 squad that stands out to you? You know, I, th- I think uh, there's such a focused group. Uh, you know, I haven't had – I've had a lot of teams in the years, but there's such a focused group. They're a team that um, they're they're only worried about one thing is making sure uh, we win every game, and and that's how they prepare every day. You know, with us getting a new stadium right now on campus, it's going up. We're having to practice off campus, so every day we're having to load on our our vehicles, go somewhere, and, and practice, and come back here for film. We're, we're not here, so um, it doesn't really. This team is just focused. It doesn't matter like what's going on with distractions or anything like that. They just show up, they play. And they go. And that's what I've loved about them. And they have great attitudes about everything. Um, it's, it's been pretty cool to see. And usually those those type of teams, man, they're, they're, they're pretty scary because um, they've kind of been there. They've kind of done it now for a while. And, and now that um, we have this opportunity in front of us, you know, anything can happen. Well, Coach, the opportunity gets back and going again this Saturday. Homecoming in Olathe, second Heart South game coming up. Uh, you beat William Woods 70-7 to a little bit earlier, hosting Missouri Valley, uh, one of the uh, teams that uh, had best record, I think second best record all time in NAI football. Uh, three and two, they're coming off a loss to Baker, and the Vikings are 24-20-1 and and all time against the Pioneers, but Mid-America's won the last five. So that includes a win last year, 28-24. Tell us a little bit about homecoming. Yeah, you know, we're really excited to have a lot of people back on campus for this Saturday. And we haven't been home here for a game in probably over three weeks. So we're kind of excited to be home, too. And, uh, you know, Missouri Valley is a great opponent. Um, Historically, since I've been here, this is my fifth year. Every game we've played with them has been within a possession. So whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. So we know already going into this game that it's probably going to be close. And uh, Coach Crehan, a new head coach there, he's a really good coach. Um, kind of got to know him over the last couple of years, and I, th- I know he'll have his guys ready to play. And so, um, but at the end of the day, we just got to kind of show up and, and take care of our business and, and, and see how it goes. All right. Pioneers 5-0 and now, nine consecutive wins uh, from last season to this season, and rolling into the heart south again, homecoming in Olathe. So Pioneers fans, come on out for that one and support your team. I'm sure Coach Hanson and the Pioneers would appreciate that. Coach Paul Hanson, thank you very much, sir, for taking time with us today. And we're excited about what's going on there and look forward to following you. We'll continue, obviously, to follow the Pioneers through the remainder of the season. It's always a privilege, sir, to get to visit with you. Awesome. Thanks for having me. 